Te conocí en el pariseo, en la noche de preseo, baby Date yo me acuerdo como si fuera ayer, baby Te apuesto pa' la vuelta, contigo te envuelta Que el DJ ponga la lenta y tapate, baby Piensa lo tuyo conociéndonos un poquito En este video, I'm going to take a look at Church Street and uh, it's a street which has seen a great deal of change in its time. It's also seen a great deal of change in my lifetime. So I'll put some photographs on the beginning here to maybe jog your memory of uh, some of the shops and some of the buildings that used to be here. To give the history of every building and every business that's ever been in Church Street, would be pretty impossible and it would make for a very very long video and even then I'd probably miss something out so anything I miss feel free to uh, put a comment and uh, everybody else can read it Church Street was pedestrianized in 1974 and prior to that it was a very very busy street Buses, lorries, wagons, cars, all used this as a route in and out of the city centre. Buses used to travel to and from um, the Pier Head and South Castle Street along here. So of course the pavements on either side were absolutely crammed with shoppers and uh, people trying to cross from one side to the other, darting in and out of the traffic. These days it's a little bit more peaceful. Even Tranquil may be on a day like today. Um, it's also a favourite place for buskers. Church Street, I would have said, was Liverpool's main shopping street back in the day. I think to an extent it still is, but um, the pretty recent um, Liverpool One shopping complex is probably a little bit more busy and um, people had the rather than here I think but certainly back in the day this was the place on the left hand side here used to be Littlewoods and that was owned by John Moores there's a statue of John Moores and his brother Cecil Moores here on the left we've just passed it there well the building on the right here with TK Maxx at the bottom used to be a department store called George Henry Lee so let's have a look at the history of George Henry Lees. Founded in 1853 by Henry Boswell Lee, George Henry Lees started life as a bonnet warehouse at number 12 Basnet Street, which is right here. The shop prospered and grew and gradually developed into a department store. In 1874, the last of the Lee sons retired and control passed to Thomas Oakshot. In 1910, the year Thomas Oakshot died, the company had over 1,200 employees. And during the 1920s, George Henry Lee was refurbished, and so began an age of elegance when the store became the North West's most exclusive shopping destination. Business was going well during the 1960s, and John Lewis purchased the department store next door, which was Bon Marsh, from its owners, the Liverpool Cooperative Society, and merged it into George Henry Lees. In 2002, the partners of the business decided, as part of the store refurbishment, the business would be rebranded under the John Lewis name. So, on the 27th of May, 2002, George Henry Lee was no more. And in 2008, John Lewis moved to its new site in Liverpool 1, where the sailor's home used to be. So we're now on Williamson Square, and this is the back of the store here, George Henry Lee's. And there are plans to turn this building into a hotel. 175 bedrooms and a casino is the plan. Right, so we're back on Church Street and the building on the right was, up until recently, occupied by Marks and Spencers. But they've recently moved out. 
They moved into their new store further up the road on the left hand side on the 15th of August. The building is called Compton House and Marks and Spencers traded from here from 1928. So Compton House is a Grade 2 listed building and the building that we see today was um, rebuilt in 1867 after a fire destroyed the original building uh, two years previously so that's 1865 and this is what the original Compton House looked like before it was burnt down when it was rebuilt in 1867 Compton House was at the time the world's biggest store with five floors after the store's closure in 1871 the building was converted into a hotel and renamed Compton Hotel. The Compton Hotel was under the management of William Russell and that's why it has his name on the frontage. So now that Marks and Spencers have moved out of uh, Compton House that means that uh, it's another very large Grade 2 listed building which is uh, empty in this city. Be interesting to see what happens there. Okay, so let's have a look at what used to be on the opposite side of the road. Built in 1700 and consecrated on the 29th of June 1704, this is St. Peter's Church and this is why Church Street is called Church Street. The building was designed by John Moffat and the environment surrounding the church was often criticised for being muddy. Church Street was not paved until 1760 and was the site of a weekly cattle market. By the early 20th century it was felt that Liverpool deserved a more significant building as its cathedral. Up until then St Peter's had served as a pro-Anglican cathedral. So construction of the new Liverpool Anglican commenced in 1904 and by 1922 St Peter's Church was obsolete. The last service took place in the church in September 1919 before demolition commenced which was completed on the 23rd of October 1922. Once the building was demolished uh, it allowed for the widening of Church Street. So the church apparently sold the land to Liverpool Council, which in turn sold the land to Woolworths. So as soon as the um, church had been demolished in 1922, work began on the new Woolworths store, and that was designed by William Priddle, and it opened in August 1923. Woolworths had opened in Liverpool in 1909 on the opposite side of Church Street and um, that was the very first Woolworths store I believe. But the store which opened on the site of St Peter's Church in 1923 closed during the 1980s and it's now the Church Street entrance to Liverpool 1. Now this store on the left hand side with the white frontage used to be a shop called Cooper's. I remember Cooper's for its strong smell of coffee. Even walking past the front door the smell of coffee would waft out at you. Cooper's was basically a food shop but they also sold um, glass and china and uh, I did read that they used to sell pets as well and had a millionaire's corner which obviously we weren't allowed in, not being millionaires. Um, fruits bought from all parts of the world were sold at Cooper's and during the 1960s it had a bakery and a cafe too. But Cooper's closed in February 1972 and I was really surprised to find that out because um, I thought it was a lot more recent than that in the 1980s but wow, 1972. Right, let me rewind the footage a little bit and um, TJUs have moved to Church Street this week. 
T.J. Hughes started out on London Road in 1912 and uh, they're moving here or have moved here depending on when I edit this video on the 21st of September 2023. T.J.'s always reminds me of uh, going back to school after summer holidays. It was where my mum used to take me to get uh, the next school uniform probably grown out of the, uh, the previous year's one. Well this is where TJ Hughes used to trade from on London Road and this is going to be converted into 199 apartments. Uh, apparently they're keeping the London Road facade. Okay so while we were looking at uh, London Road we've just passed the junction with Church Street, Whitechapel to the right Paradise Street to the left and we're now walking along Lord Street. I thought while we were here we might as well carry on the walk and have a look at Marks and Spencer's new store which is on the corner of Lord Street and South John Street which basically leads into the Liverpool One shopping complex. Lord Street was built in the late 17th century for Lord Molyneux, who the, uh, who the street is named after, Lord Street. His townhouse would survive for 250 years before being destroyed by bombs during the May Blitz of 1941. And as we get further up Lord Street, I'll um, point out where his house used to be. I think this photograph dates from the 1980s and uh, Lord Street for a long long time was a favourite place for jewellers. And that uh, little fashion dates back to 1705. But a lot of Lord Street was uh, rebuilt in the 1950s uh, from the damage of the 1940s. So this is the new M&S on the corner of South John Street and obviously Lord Street here. Well, Marks and Spencer's moved here on the 15th of August 2023. So we're just going to walk up the rest of Lord Street to its junction with Castle Street on the right, South Castle Street or as it's known now Derby Square on the left and in front continuation James Street. Now Lord Molyneux's cottage or house was on the right hand side just where that blue sign ends just behind that bus stop. So that's the uh, that's the guy Lord Molyneux who this street is named after. And the uh, shop behind the bus stop which I just pointed out if you're interested is uh, Tesco Express. Right, so we're almost at the end of our journey. We're at the top of um, Lord Street now and um, going to turn around. I'm not going to film the return journey, but what I will do is um, put some shops on the video uh, from the internet and see if they jog your memory. So here we are, Derby Square. Bully's department store on the left and Crane's music store on the right. Burton's. CNA, or as my mum used to call it, Coats and Hats. Chelsea girl, spent a lot of time in there just standing around waiting for someone to choose something. And this is another shot of uh, CNAs. And this is Cousins Corner, Radio Rentals. And top man. Okay. 
So yes, lots and lots missing, so um, see if any of this jogs your memory. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch up soon. Como tú lo necesitas, como a ti te va a gustar